We're in Upton, Kentucky today. And this is Andrew Barnes with Prayer Mountain Mushrooms. Well, how did I get that name? We wanted a name that uh, really spoke to the power and majesty of the mushroom. It's, it fits. The kind of mushrooms you grow here do not make you take trips to other planets. Correct. <laughs> These are the kinds that are just absolutely delicious. Probably my favorite are the shiitake and oyster, which I see sitting right over there. Yeah. Now you told me today when I came here that you're gonna send me home with some. That's a terrible part of this job. Sometimes I just have to take home stuff. Oh, like poor Tim. But I'll probably put it to good use. We'll probably put it in a recipe on our show. Wonderful. Let's get to the part, the good part here. You do all this yourself. You have a building over there where you grow these massive quantities of mushrooms. How did all this get started? Uh, it's been quite a journey. My wife and I have grown mushrooms as a hobby for uh, many years, and then she went to uh, the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife's Becoming Outdoor Women program. It's a good outfit. Yeah, uh, and learned about cultivating uh, gourmet mushrooms uh, for profit. Uh, came home and pitched me this wild idea of, you know, how would you like to start a mushroom farm? I said, well, that's something we could probably do. And so we set out uh, you know, basically trying to figure out why we shouldn't do that, and we couldn't. And in the process, we wrote a business plan and got funding, and here we are. Now, let's, 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 let's back up a little bit on the mushroom itself. All right, I love mushrooms. I could eat them in just about it. We put them in chili, we put them in almost everything. What's the nutritional value of a mushroom? What's, what's important in it that, that we need? Well, what's most important with a mushroom and what makes it really a uh, powerful uh, food item is that these guys have protein, they've got vitamin D, one of the few non-animal sources, uh, and they are chock full of really great compounds that are healthful. You'll find compounds that help with cholesterol. Uh, on a gourmet level, they contain glutamate, which stimulates parts of your tongue that you're not normally used to, but you have receptors for. And so that's where you get that savory flavor. Some people call it the umami flavor. Uh, and it's a really powerful food. All right, you're around them all the time, and I know you have to eat them. What's your favorite way? If you're eating just, just eating a mushroom, how would you eat it? It's, let's say it's shiitake. Yeah, you know what? We, we put them in everything. <laughs> uh, people always ask us for recipes, and I say, whatever you normally cook, chop them up and add them. Uh, and it's, it's super easy. Steak is one of my favorites. Chop them up, saute them in a pan, and put them on top of your steak. Now, you have several different things that you obviously, th this, these are fungus. They grow in their natural state. How would you find these? If you, if you were looking for shiitake mushrooms in their extremely wonderful habitat that they like, how would you find that? Yeah, you would go to Japan. <laughs> That's a long trip. Uh, <laughs> you know, assuming that you could find them locally, they would be growing on trees, hardwood trees, uh, lots of shade, lots of moisture. So spring, fall, you might find them then. You know, farmers love to grow them on logs. And so, you know, you may find some just wandering about. Here, you have your environment over here that you've created with a greenhouse in effect. And you have these multiple packets. Explain how you put those together to get your final product. Uh, so we start with hardwood sawdust and nutrient and water. We mix them all together and we have a machine that puts it into little bags. Uh, so those bags, we prepare for inoculation uh, by using an autoclave, and uh, we run hundreds through at a time. And when we're done, we have these really great, nice, clean bags of substrate. It's basically sawdust. And from there, we're gonna put about a thimble full of live fungal organism in there, seal it up, and then let it sit. And so for oyster mushrooms, you're gonna let it sit for six weeks. For shiitake, you'll let it six, uh, sit for six months. Six months? Wow. All right, now I've got a question for you. I'm seeing these, I guess these are getting close to being harvested. That's right. Now, in the spring, when I collect morel mushrooms, man, they grow so rapidly. I wonder about this little nubby guy right here. Where will he be tomorrow or the next day? How yeah. fast do they grow? So these guys are actually going to double in size about every 24 hours. Wow. Now it slows down as they approach their maximum size but until they get there, it's boom, and then they just slow down, and then you pick them. The cap here actually curls outward as it ripens, mm -hmm. and so it approaches an edge. So you can see these guys I left, uh, they would have been ready this morning, 
but I left them to show you here that as that edge curls out, that's how you can tell really. So they let you know by, by the physical characteristics what's going on when they need to be harvested. Exactly. So this guy tomorrow is going to be about that size. Exactly. And then that guy will be one of these, and these guys tomorrow will be one of those. So when these are harvested, you take them from the very base of the stalk? That's right. So we come right in here and uh, very gingerly remove it, and there it is. So The whole shebang right there. Now, do you eat the stalks on these? Well, no, we don't eat them. You can save them and actually boil them into stalk. Uh, and, which is delicious. Mushroom stock is fantastic. Now, once this growth has taken place, is this little block done or will it send more out later? That block is gonna keep going. And as long as you keep it hydrated, it can last for three to four, maybe five months. Oh, wow. And it's important to note that when we harvest these, they have come out of a bag of clean sawdust and they have never seen dirt. So these don't even have to be cleaned. You can just chop them up, eat them, right as oh, we wow. harvest them. Um, so we're going to harvest and we're gonna take them to farmer's markets, we're gonna take them to uh, your favorite restaurants and uh, get them out there as much as we can to grocers as well. You know, it is something that uh, folks that wanna get into growing mushrooms, there's a lot of resources and it is so much fun. It is uh, tremendously uh, enriching to watch something grow, and especially when you can do it up close and personal like that. So for people interested, uh, University of Kentucky has a great resource on how to convert some of your logs at home uh, and do it in your backyard. On I think I'd rather just let you do it and buy them from you. Well, you know, we are here for, <laughs> we're here for you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a walk and a look around. And I thank you so much for taking your time out for it. This is a cool place and you're doing great things. Thank you, sir. We really mm -hmm. appreciate you guys coming out. Mm -hmm.